During his four-year presidency, Donald Trump's sprawling private club in Florida, Mar-a-Lago, was often referred to as the Winter White House. Trump stayed at the resort for all or part of 142 days during his presidency. Trump entertained world leaders, coordinated the US response to a North Korean missile test, and even approved a military strike on a Syrian airfield while in this location. And when Trump reluctantly left Washington, D.C. in January 2021, he established a base at Mar-a-Lago. Welcome to Planet Lux, and in this video we'll take a look inside Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. Located in Palm Beach, Florida, Mar-a-Lago, which translates as sea to lake, is a 20-acre private club, resort and historic landmark. It was originally built as a private residence for Marjorie Merriweather Post, a breakfast cereal heiress between 1924 and 1927. It is a 126-room mansion with expansive verandas and well-kept lawns. The main house is an adaptation of the hispano moresque style, which has long been popular among Mediterranean villas. It is crescent-shaped, with an upper and lower cloister running along the building's concave side facing Lake Worth. A 75-foot tower atop the structure provides a magnificent view in all directions for miles, according to the club's official website. The U.S. Department of the Interior designated the estate as the Mar-a-Lago National Historic Site in 1969, and it was later added to the National Register of Historic Places. Post bequeathed the home to the U.S. government in 1973 as a retreat for presidents and senior politicians, but it was returned to private ownership in 1981 after President Richard Nixon and Jimmy Carter did not use it and security and maintenance costs were raised. U.S. presidents have frequently been wealthy men with mansions, but Trump was the first to charge people to join him at his. This provided ample opportunity for members to lobby, including billionaires Bill Koch, real estate developer Bruce Toll, and insurance mogul George Norcross. The costs to the public purse were also significant. Trump's regular interaction with 1,000 or so people who attended events there on weekends posed significant challenges for the Secret Service. Two Chinese women, one armed with surveillance equipment, were apprehended and deported for trespassing. By the way, if you're watching us for the first time, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can enjoy our future videos while getting updated. Getting back to the topic? Marjorie Merriweather Post, the serial heiress, donated her 128-room Palm Beach mansion to the US government in 1973 to serve as the Winter White House. Post, who inherited her father's Postum cereal company and went on to become America's richest woman, finished building Mar-a-Lago in 1927 for $7 million, which is about $120 million today. The estate was designed by architects Marion Sims Waith and Joseph Urban and sits on 20 acres bordering the Atlantic Ocean on one side and Florida's intercoastal waterway on the other. Post left her home to the American government after her death, intending for it to be used as a warm weather retreat for the president. However, the government returned Mar-a-Lago, which had been designated a National Historic Landmark a year earlier, to the Post Foundation in 1981, citing the $1 million annual maintenance cost. Here comes Donald Trump. The Mongols reported first offer of $28 million for the property was rejected. But he persisted and the market tanked as a result. Trump purchased the property in 1985 for the relatively low price of $5 million and paid an additional $3 million for Post's antiques and furniture. In addition to Mar-a-Lago, Post owned an Adirondacks retreat, a Long Island mansion, a yacht she designed that was the largest privately owned yacht at the time, and Hillwood, a Washington, D.C. estate that is now a house museum containing her extensive collection of jewelry, Sevres porcelain, Fabergé, and French masterpieces. Trump converted Mar-a-Lago into a private club in 1995, spending $7 million on a 20,000-square-foot ballroom. He took over a coat of arms that British authorities had granted to Post's third husband, Joseph Edward Davis, in 1939 and replaced Integritas, the Latin word for integrity, with Trump. In addition, he spent $100,000 on four gold-plated sinks. Basically, gold is everywhere, just like in his Fifth Avenue penthouse. 
Trump and his family live in a private wing of the White House when he's in residence. Trump's former butler and Mar-a-Lago's unofficial historian Anthony Senecal revealed some secrets to the New York Times in 2016, describing the library as paneled with centuries-old British oak and filled with rare first-edition books that no one in the family ever read. Trump hasn't always gotten along with the locals when it comes to his plans for Mar-a-Lago. He has gone to war with the city of Palm Beach over the size of its American flag. The original, installed in 2006, was on an 80-foot pole, despite Palm Beach ordinances prohibiting flagpoles from being taller than 42 feet. A violation is punishable by a daily fine of $250. Trump filed a $25 million lawsuit claiming that his right to free speech was being violated. He and the town eventually reached an agreement. He switched to a smaller flag atop a 70-foot pole. Instead of paying fines, he made a $100,000 donation to veterans' charities. He sued Palm Beach County again in 2015, this time for what he called deliberate and malicious moves to direct departing flights from Palm Beach International Airport over Mar-a-Lago. Obviously, this suit was dropped after the election, because there is now a Secret Service mandated no-fly zone over Mar-a-Lago when Trump is in residence. Trump welcomed Jewish members, African Americans and gay couples who had previously been barred from joining other Palm Beach clubs when he opened Mar-a-Lago. Members reportedly paid a $100,000 initiation fee and $14,000 annual dues for the privilege of using the facilities. Following Trump's election, the inauguration fee was raised to $200,000. According to most accounts, it is a profitable business. In 2014, Trump earned $15.6 million from the club. He earned $25.1 million in his first year in office. Last year, that figure fell slightly to $21.4 million. Trump has spent 133 days at the property since taking office. In early February 2017, he made his first trip there as president for the Red Cross Bowl, and the following weekend he hosted Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. He was at Mar-a-Lago when he named Lt. Gen. H. R. McCaster as his national security advisor, authorized a missile strike on Syria and hosted Chinese President Xi Jinping for a two-day summit. According to the Government Accountability Office, the President's four trips to Mar-a-Lago cost taxpayers at least $13.6 million in 2017. Mar-a-Lago temporarily closed its doors in March due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Three visitors, including Brazil's President Jair Bolsonaro's press secretary, tested positive for the coronavirus after attending an event hosted by President Trump at the club. Among the stories of palace intrigue, Trump allegedly barred infamous sex offender Jeffrey Epstein from Mar-a-Lago after the latter hit on a member's teenage daughter. In any case, Trump appears to be more at ease at Mar-a-Lago than almost anywhere else. He definitely prefers it to the White House. At Mar-a-Lago, he can be himself without being constrained by strict DC protocols or bothered by scores of aides and handlers. In addition, he has more friends down there than, say, in Manhattan, where Trump, a lifelong New Yorker, is extremely unpopular. Indeed, in September 2019, he and the First Lady relocated their primary residence from Manhattan to Palm Beach, where he could presumably pay lower taxes and feel more at ease. Trump appears to be enjoying life in New York again after a period of withdrawal following his defeat. He is the DJ every night, according to sources. Staff bring the laptop over around 9.30 p.m. and he chooses the songs, which are usually the same 10 or so from his clubbing days, such as YMCA and a few Elton John songs. And with that being said, it's time to end our video, but before that would like to know your views about Mar-a-Lago, let us know in the comments. Like this video and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos like this. We'll see you in the next video.